This is Ones to Watch, where we pick four players from specific categories ahead of the summer's European Championships to keep an eye on. Today, it's the turn of defenders, so let's get into our first category. So first this week, we'll start where we always do, with the Dark Horse, and it's someone whose stock has risen exponentially in the last 12 months, as he's made up a brilliant part of the defensive unit that has seen Inter Milan take home the Serie A title. It's Alessandro Bastoni. One of the main reasons for his development in this squad was actually the form of Diego Godin. Now, when Antonio Conte signed Godin, he thought he'd fit in. Turns out, a year later, he didn't. He was off the books and headed to calories. He didn't really fit into the three-man back line that Antonio Conte loves to play. So, they left a spot open for a defender alongside the likes of De Vrij and Skriniar, step in Bastoni. Not only has the six foot three Italian proved himself to be an excellent defender with fantastic ball control and passing ability, but the fact that he is a left-footed centre half adds excellent balance to defensive partnerships, something which Italy have done numerous times over the years. Now, of course, there's the bonucci Chiellini partnership that utilizes the strongest foot of each on either side of a centre-back pairing. The same thing goes for Acerbi, who's in the squad as well, with Mancini and Toloi as well. In fact, all of these defenders are in Roberto Mancini's 26-man provisional squad for the Euros. But if you actually look at it, and if you take everything into account over the course of the season, Bastoni's probably got an argument to be considered the best centre-back in this Italy squad based off the last campaign. The one thing that stands in his way, though, is that Mancini often plays with a back four and has rarely switched to a back three. In fact, he did in the most previous international against Lithuania, which, of course, Bastoni started. But when it comes to the regular back four, he's made so many different decisions when it comes to the centre-back partnership that it's difficult to tell who's actually going to be getting the role. Having said that, if there's a change in tactic or a change in team throughout the tournament, I think Bastoni can actually work his way into the squad. And if he does so, you can expect it to be almost a changing of the guard. With Acerbi, Toloi, Chiellini and Bonucci all entering their 30s or well into their mid-30s, Bastoni really could be the backbone of this Italian defence for the future. Although, having said that, we are talking about Italian centre-halves here, who clearly feel absolutely comfortable playing well into their 40s. OK, next up, we've got the player with a point to prove in coming from such a successful club side. John Stones has a lot to do when it comes to shouldering the responsibility for England. Now, yes, it's well documented that this season has seen a bit of a rise in John Stones' form, especially when Guardiola's team were going through such a fantastic streak of wins. Having said that, though, over the past few seasons, he's not really been a nailed-on starter. Due to injuries and drop in form, he's been quite inconsistently in the starting eleven. When he does come in, it looks as though he's always the second-choice centre-back. Like, the nailed-on starter has been either Company, Otamendi, obviously Ruben Diaz this season, and sometimes Fernandinho's even filled in at centre-half as well. So Stones hasn't necessarily been the one where all the pressure is on him to be the guiding light in the defensive unit. The reason why I've got him down to prove himself is because when it comes to England, he's actually going to be one of the more senior and one of the more experienced centre-backs in this squad. If you look at the rest of the defensive line, no one has a clue who's going to be playing at right back. We don't even know whether it's going to be a back three or a back five for England. The left back spot looks fine, but a centre half beyond the fact that Harry Maguire is facing late fitness tests ahead of the Euro campaign. It looks as though John Stones will be pretty much the nailed on starter for England. This, as I mentioned, is a massive contrast to what he's going through in Manchester City, where he's around such a brilliant defensive team. Of course, if John Stones wants to be mentioned as one of the better centre-backs in Europe and really prove himself to be back after a good run of form in Manchester City, he's going to need to prove himself on the international stage against some of the best strikers that Europe has to offer. Next up, and when you think of a young star, you often think of someone who could change the game, come off the bench, make a name for himself late on. Not necessarily someone who could command a starting place from the off, but in Portugal's Nuno Mendes, they may have just that kind of player. With Mendes and Sporting having such a fantastic season as they lifted the Portuguese title for the first time since 2002, it's no wonder that he's managed to work his way into the national team just barely 12 months after his first team debut. He contributed at both ends of the pitch brilliantly this season with his decision-making, defensive awareness and physical attributes, helping his side to have the best defensive record in the league and lose just one game. In attack, his technical prowess when it comes to his dribbling, passing and crossing allow him to become a real attacking threat and his understanding of the game and movement both with and without the ball 
also help his teammates to find space. It's not a bad tactic when you look at the attackers that Portugal have got in their side. Like I mentioned in my video, I predicted the Portuguese lineup, which you can find right here. Guerrero is going to be the man, probably, who gets the nod just ahead of Mendes. That's because he's got very good experience and has had a fantastic season with Dortmund. But having said that, Coach Fernando Santos seems to like Mendes. He started two of the three World Cup qualifiers in March. And, well, there's always a bit of a surprise when it comes to the Euros and the team selection. In fact, when you look at the group, and obviously Portugal are in a very, very difficult group, it's obviously not going to work specifically like this, but you may like to think that Guerrero will get the nod against France and Germany, but Mendes could be given the opportunity to start against the lesser Hungary. If he does get into the team and has a great showing, it's probably not going to affect his potential transfer value too much, though, as even before the tournament has started, the club have made it very, very clear that they will be accepting nothing less than the full minimum fee release clause for the left-back, which is around £60 million. So even if he doesn't have a great tournament, he's still going to cost potential suitors a hell of a lot of money, and it's probably worth it for such a fantastic fullback who's been so consistent over his 35 appearances in all competitions this season. Here's a fun fact for you. Only eight outfield players in the Premier League started all 38 games this season, and our superstar defender is one of them. He helped his side when they were going through some defensive frailties. He was brilliant for Liverpool in the run-in at the end of the season as they made the top four, and this summer he'll be captaining Scotland at the Euros. Of course, it's Andy Robertson. Now, as always, when it comes to the superstar in this video, as I'm well aware that there are plenty of defensive superstars to pick from, but I just think with Andy Robertson, it's made all a little, little bit more special. First off, because no offence to Scotland here, but the calibre of player that they're normally producing isn't necessarily someone with the heights of the career that Robertson has reached. And on top of this, in the last few seasons, he's been fantastically consistent as a Premier League and a Champions League to his name, amongst a smattering of other smaller trophies too, and he's just been bloody good. When it comes to the Scotland setup, though, Robertson has far more impact to the other end of the pitch because he's allowed to get forward a bit more like we see him do for Liverpool. The difference is, when he's at Liverpool, he's playing in a back four and obviously has that defensive angle in the back of his mind. When he's playing for Scotland, he plays normally in a back five with Kieran Tierney filling into the left centre-back role like he also does for Arsenal. This obviously allows Andy Robertson to get forward that little bit more and there's more impetus on him to provide more width to the wings on Scotland's counter-attack. I say the counter and obviously Scotland aren't going to be so free-flowing that Andy Robertson doesn't have to worry about defending because they're going to be pinned back in some games. They're not necessarily the favourites to eat to the matches they play. But when they do manage to defend and spring the ball forward, Robertson's boundless energy is going to be so, so crucial for them. On top of all of this, barely a couple of weeks goes by in the Premier League in the last few seasons where we don't see a phenomenal assist from Andy Robertson and you know his crossing is on absolute point. There's all of that, plus we haven't even mentioned what a ridiculously good captain and leader he is both on and off the pitch. It's his strong mentality which helps him so much as seen when he was released by Celtic as a youngster, when he went from playing at Hull to playing at Liverpool and winning a Champions League and being one of the best defenders in Europe all within the space of 24 months. It's all of this, his ridiculous work rate and his fantastic ethic within the team, which make him the quintessential Scottish player for me and definitely, definitely the superstar to keep an eye on this summer. So there you have it, my four defenders to keep an eye on for this summer at the Euros. Of course, you guys let me know your thoughts down below. Check out everything else we've got going on, including the goalkeeper episode of this format. And until next time, I will see you guys later.